Hello, this is an explanation of problem 7-25, utilization of a constrained resource. I know some of you have asked me some questions about this, so I thought it would be best just to make you a video. So I have just written down the information that was given to us in Connect on um, what the plant's capacity is, their direct labor rate, what the fixed costs are. You can read all of this. Um, and then this again was given to us now. I don't know what you're thinking, but these are actually dolls that they're making. And so this is the name of a doll. So they're making a Debbie doll, a Trish ball doll, a Sarah Mike doll, and a sewing kit. Okay, so those are the things that they manufacture. All right, so Debbie is not a person. It is a doll, like an American doll girl, perhaps. I had boys, so I don't know much about it. In any event, this is the demand, selling price, direct materials, and direct labor for the year. So the first part says, determine the contribution margin per direct labor expended on the product. Now, you can see, in my usual fashion, I have color-coded this. So Debbie, Trish, Sarah, Mike, and the sewing kit all have direct labor um, rate, uh, hour. These are the direct labor costs per unit okay not the direct labor hour per hour it's actually this is how much direct labor it cost to make a debbie so i put these numbers here right along there then they told us that because it was eight dollars per direct hour that is the labor rate that we pay then what we need to do is figure out how much that translates to in terms of direct labor hours that are spent on a unit okay so how many un how many minutes did it take it took 0 0.40 minutes which is about i suppose 20 minutes or so on that particular doll because remember the debbie takes three dollars and twenty cents per doll and it's eight dollars an hour so therefore we took the direct labor cost of 3.20 and we divided it by the eight dollars per direct hour to come up with the direct labor hours per unit if this would have said just to kind of make this easier if this would have said eight dollars was the direct labor cost to make a debbie and it is eight dollars an hour that we pay our workers well then we would have known that it took us one hour and the direct labor cost was eight dollars but that's not what this says this says no it only took me three dollars and twenty cents to make a debbie so that converts to be 0 0.40 minutes to make a debbie we do the same thing with the trish okay trish costs us two dollars in direct labor hours so if we divide that by eight, we come up with a 0.25. That's about 15 minutes and so on and so on and so forth. So there's my, um, there's my calc, that's my first calculation. Okay. Then the sales price was given to us. Okay. So we can see that the sales price was 1350 for a Debbie. I just transferred that down. See how this is $5 and 50 cents, $21, $10 and $8. Okay, now I'm going to pause this video for just a minute and freeze my fr uh, pane so I can continue to look at that information. Okay, so we figured out the $13.50 for the sales price, then the direct materials as the variable cost comes in here. That's exactly what they gave us right down here, and this just goes right across the top. Then there's the direct labor charges. Remember, these are all variable costs. Then I have my variable overhead so what it told me back up at the top i'm actually gonna up at the top what did it say the variable over cost overhead costs are two dollars per direct labor hour so we come down over here and my direct labor hour direct labor hours per unit right which was over here, the 0 0.40 gets multiplied times the $2 to come up with 80 cents. Okay, same with the Trish, she is 0.25, so you multiply her 0.25 times $2 and you come up with 50 cents, so on and so forth. There's the 0 0.70 right up here times the $2, that's 1.40. Okay, so that's where you get that. Then, what are my to total variable costs? That's just my direct 
material, direct labor, variable manufacturing overhead, and there's that number over here. So then the contribution margin is nothing more than a calculation of what's my sales price less what's my total variable cost, and that's what that is. So that's where you see this. I gave you an SP sales price minus TVC total variable cost. Now, that's a B. Okay, just like direct labor hours is an A, that's a B. Contribution margin per direct labor hour. Okay, so when we're talking about constrained resources, what we mean by that is what are the, based on how long that doll takes me to make, what's the contribution margin per the direct labor hour? So the, the, the max we want is based on how little time it makes us to make, takes us to make that doll over what the contribution margin is. So we're going to try to maximize that number. So I simply took B, $5.20, divided by A, which was the 0 .40. What did that represent? That represented how long it took me to make that doll in minutes. And I come up with my, direct, my contribution margin per direct labor hour is $13. I did that for the rest of them, $7.60, $10.80. Just to remind you, 0 .70 divided by the contribution margin, and so on and so forth. Now this one that's $6 that's in red, I have highlighted this in red because this is making the Mike doll. So the Mike doll, the contribution margin is a measly $3, and it takes us 30 minutes to make that Mike doll. Okay, so the contribution margin per direct labor hour is $6, which you can see is the lowest contribution margin per direct when you when you speak about it on a per direct labor hour. Now what's interesting to note above the scope of this question, but you can see that if you were looking at the contribution margin in and of itself, the mic doesn't look too bad. It's three dollars. It's certainly not the lowest one. The lowest one was Trish. But when you look at it per direct labor hour, in other words, if you look at it at how long it takes me to make the mic, well now Mike doesn't look so good, all right? So Trish actually wins only because she only takes half the time. Do you see that 0.25 versus 0.50? Half the time to make than it is to take a mic. And then the sewing kit knocks us all out of the park at $14 for uh, contribution margin per direct labor hour. All right, so whew, let's see what this question asks us. Calculate the total direct labor hours that will be required to produce the units during the year. So what we do is we take this 0 0.40, by now that should be looking pretty familiar. That's this number right over here. And then we take that and these are the estimated sales. So let me, I'm sorry to keep going back up and down, but these are where I got these numbers. Okay. So the demand for Debbie's is 50,000. The demand for Trish's is 42, 35, 40, and 325 for the sewing kit. Great thing about the sewing kit is there's lots of demand for it and it's got a pretty good contribution margin per direct labor. Hour. So I think we're going to do pretty well as a company. All right. So anyway, I just transferred these numbers down, transferred these numbers down. Here are my total hours. So I'd like to sell 50,000 of these units at 0.4 hours that it takes me per unit. In total, to make all of those units, it's going to take me 20,000 hours. Same with the Trish. Let's look at Trish. We have 42,000 in demand. Each Trish takes me 0.25 hours. So the total amount of hours I'm going to spend making as many Trishes as possible is 10,500 hours. And you do it for the rest of these. Anyway, then you total it all up at the end. I don't think the question asked you to do that, but I did it. And the total hours required is 140. Now, if you remember back up at the question, the question told us the company's plant has a capacity of 130 direct labor hours. Whoops. So we can't really make everything that we have a demand for. So the question here is, okay, well, since I can't make them all, um, which one am I going to sacrifice? Because the Mike doll, if you go back up here, has the lowest contribution margin per direct labor hour, we're going to shave a little of, um, we're not going to, we're not going to make as many Mike dolls as is demanded. 
Okay, sorry, Mike. All right, so you can see that because he's the lowest, the demand for him is 20,000. We're only going to be able to make 10,000 of those because we have to reduce somewhere around here the production, and we might as well reduce the production of the one that makes us the least amount of money, which is the Mike. Okay, and then it says, what's the highest contribution margin that the company can make if it makes optimal use of, of all of its resources? So if we go back up, last time hopefully that I'm going to cruise back up here, but where is my contribution margin per unit? There it is, $5.20. Okay, that's how much each product makes me. So it's $5.20, $1.90, $7.56 so on and so forth. So I transfer that down here. Here's my 520, my 190, my 756. Got all that. And then here's the optimal production, right, of all of the stuff that I can demand, right? Notice that they didn't reduce it by 10. They just said, what's the maximum amount of money that I can, um, that I can use? Okay, and that comes up to a total of one million five hundred seventy-four dollars, seventy-four hundred thousand four hundred dollars. Yeah, you get the idea. All right. Okay. What is the highest price in terms of the rate per hour that they would be willing to pay to increase their capacity? Okay. Remember, there, the only thing they really need to increase is time to make those extra ten thousand mics. Right. Okay. So they would be willing to pay up to $14, which is $8 of the labor hour plus $6 of that contribution margin per hour, right? So, um, so that would be this number right up here. Okay, so let's see, that should just about do it. And the last part of the consideration is the fact that all they'd have to do is instead of hiring additional workers, they could just pay time and a half and increase the capacity to complete the, um, the production demand for the Mike dolls. Okay, so that should do it. I hope that helps.